Hello and welcome back, curious people. Our statement today reads, A spherical conductor of radius A carries a charge Q. It is surrounded by a linear dielectric material of susceptibility chi E out to radius B. Find the energy of this configuration. A quick look at the diagram shows that our conductor is indeed inside to radius A and the dielectric coats it out to radius B. Things to know for this problem. The energy of this system is equal to one half of the integral of D dot E and this is the relation with the dielectric constants. So for our solution, let's break this into parts. Since uh, we know that for any radius that's between zero and A, we're inside the conductor, uh, whereas anything from A to B is inside the dielectric material, and therefore anything outside B is in air. So from here, we can use Gauss's law with the dielectric displacement to see that Anything inside the conducting shell uh, is zero, and anything between uh, the conducting shell and air has this uh, q over 4 pi r squared in the r hat direction. If you recall the, the relationship between the electric displacement and the electric field is d equal epsilon e. So e equals d divided by epsilon, and that's what we see in the curly brackets below. Again, inside the sphere, uh, inside the conducting sphere, our Gaussian surface would yield zero charge enclosed. So a zero field there makes sense. Um, notice that when we're between A and B, we're in the dielectric material, so we're dividing by epsilon. When we're outside of uh, B, that dielectric constant epsilon R is just uh, one because we're in air, so all we have is epsilon naught which makes sense because our Gaussian surface outside yields a total charge enclosed of Q. All right, so the energy now is the triple integral or the volume integral of the dot product with D and the electric field in their respective regions. Since both D and E only depend on R, the uh, angular integrals phi and theta can just be expressed in the parentheses 2 pi times 2, respectively. Um, in our first region from zero to A, since both were zero, that integral is zero. So our only, re our only integral regions that we need to consider are from A to B and B to infinity. So let's simplify and start uh, evaluating these integrals. Uh, so we note that two pi times two equals four pi can be factored out from both of them, as well as Q squared over four pi squared um, and their dot products, that will lead to a square term. So a factor of 4 pi cancels out. Uh, inside the particular integrals, we see we've got a lot of cancellations. Any integrating factor, we have that r squared there, so that cancels with 1 over r squared in both of them. The dot product of r hat and r hat just goes to 1, since they're unit vectors. And uh, we're left with some pretty easy integration thereafter. Uh, recall that the definition of epsilon is uh, epsilon r times epsilon naught. So again, we can factor uh, 1 over epsilon naught out. And then we just integrate and evaluate as such, leaving us with the final answer of q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught, 1 plus chi e, uh, multiplied by 1 over a plus chi e over b. Uh be careful with how you work these fractions and uh, the common multiples, and then uh, you'll find that this result was pretty quick and easy to get.